Hey friends, have you ever wondered about some of the food at Dollar Tree? I'm taking $35 and making seven realistic family dinners using all Dollar Tree food items. I'm trying some new things I never even thought about buying there before. You and me are both in for some real surprises. The Dollar Tree is always a great option for pasta, but look here, 25% more free. So not only 16 ounces, you're getting 20 ounces for a buck 25. And they also carry the oven ready lasagna noodles. It has been a long time since I have really dug through the frozen section at my Dollar Tree. We've got 13 ounce bags of frozen cheese ravioli and these little homestyle meatballs, there's just 10 of them in there. So that may or may not be a good deal. I've never seen these before, this mozzarella cheese stuffed breadstick. Again, I don't think one of them for $1.25 is that great a deal. And also not seen these extra large El Monterey brand burritos, and they are huge for about $1.25. Y'all, my Dollar Tree has bacon. It's like, Four slices for $1.25. No. These are some of the heat and serve Jimmy Dean patties, but there's only four little sausage patties in here, and it is about three and a half ounces. Over here is something I've never seen, and this is frozen, but it's classic pork sausage, seven ounces. A much, much better deal. Here's you a little bit of an overview of what I got at the Dollar Tree. This was about $40, and I'm doing what I would call a realistic Dollar Tree week of meals. These are things that my family would actually eat, not just rice and beans, but also with a little bit of a convenience twist to it, because that's what I do here, is quick and easy weeknight meals. Also, butter and eggs. The Dollar Tree in Knoxville, I believe it does have that, but mine did not. So I may get an egg or maybe some butter out of my fridge and put with all this. But this is going to be a lot of fun and a big, big challenge. Here's my thought process in this meal. We have been wanting to try the little pizzas that you make on Texas toast. They didn't have any pepperoni at the Dollar Tree, but I did find this sausage. Then they also had this cheese ravioli. I thought I could maybe squeeze two meals out of this. First thing that I'm going to do is brown up this little roll of sausage. And don't be scared, it looked this color when it came out. I'm sure it has a bunch of fillers in it. But um, you know what? We're going to brown it up and we're going to go with it. Also putting my Texas toast in a 425 degree oven. Going to cook it about five minutes. I'm also going to sprinkle in some Italian seasoning. I got this one at the Dollar Tree, but I'm not going to open it yet because I already have one open. But I just wanted to let you know they do have a great seasoning selection at the Dollar Tree. We know seasonings are the key to any good meal. You can make anything taste better with a little bit of seasoning on it. This is pretty greasy, so I'm going to use the old paper towel trick. Get up a little bit of this grease here. Look at that sausage. I really made sure and browned it up good, and it did take some color there. That looks nice. I mean, it ain't swaggerties, but you know what? Looks yummy. These smell delicious, and that sausage smelled delicious too. I'm just going to start with a big spoonful of pizza sauce, not too much. This pretty thick toast, I don't think it'll get soggy, but we're just going to go on here and see what it looks like first. Yeah, it's soaking through. We can put a little bit more. Now we're going to give each piece of toast some cheese here. Now I'm going to put just a little scoop of the sausage right here on the top. And this is lunch, so I am only making one for each of us. There's just three of us here today, so I'm just making one for each of us for lunch. If they want more, I can definitely come in here and pull the other three out. I'm going to do a little bit of cheating here. Maddie's not a big lover of sausage, and I have pepperoni, so she asked for that, and I'm just doing it. I'm cheating. Sorry. Let's live large with this dollar store cheese. I'm going to put just a little bit more right on the top. I always like to sprinkle just a little bit more Italian right over the top. I think it looks pretty when it melts down in that cheese. 
and it'll give it just a little more flavor. Now we're going to put these under the broiler for about two minutes. Look how pretty these are. These little pizzas were so delicious. I can't wait to make them again. I'll put all of the information for the prices of every meal up on the screen for you at 62 cents a serving. I think these are great. We did just eat one a piece, more of a snack, but so good. Would I eat this sausage by itself on a biscuit? Maybe not, but it was definitely good in this little toast pizza. Okie doke, here's what we're going to do. I only use that much of this pasta sauce, so I'm going to put it in a little container and I will have it to use with the frozen ravioli. I'm also going to save my sausage. It is nice and cooled, but I'm going to put it separately. I mentioned that bag of frozen pasta was not that large, so I'm probably not going to use all of that sauce and I don't want to put all my meat in all of the sauce. It's not going to go that far is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Long story short, I'm doing that because I'm going to make all these Dollar Tree meals in one week. You could definitely freeze either one of these like they are and keep them longer. I do this with spaghetti and pizza and sauce like that all the time and I would put it in a bag, in a freezer bag and just flatten it out and keep it in the freezer. I am so excited to introduce you guys to a friend of mine tonight. Her name is Mandy, and her YouTube channel is called Mandy Flores, A Realistic Cleaning Motivation. I have been a fan of Mandy's for years. Long before I had a YouTube channel, I watched her religiously every week. The things I love about Mandy, just like her name says, her channel is realistic, and I immediately bonded with her. We're about the same age and stage in life. The girl is funny. I always leave with a smile on my face. She is so, so very witty. And not only do I get some laughs and the cleaning motivation that I showed up for, she's also good to throw in a quick and easy weeknight meal or maybe a Walmart haul or what she's found at TJ Maxx or maybe what's coming from Amazon for the week. With Mandy, you just get a little bit of everything and that is so hard to find nowadays. I think you're gonna love her. And tonight, Mandy has a video that is a whole week's worth of Dollar Tree dinners as well. I can't wait to see what she's come up with. I'll have a link to her video and her channel down in my description box. Be sure when you're done watching here tonight to go over and check her out and let her know that Mel sent you. And if you're coming over from Mandy's, thank you for coming. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope you've had a good time and I hope that you'll stick around and see what else we have going on here. Today, we're gonna make a chicken pot pie with our Dollar Tree ingredients and my really pretty pie plate I love to use is actually at my in-laws house. I made a pie for Father's Day and left that there. So you're getting this real scrunchy old pan and I'm gonna mix everything right here in it and I'm using two cans of chunk white chicken breast that I have drained. These are four and a half ounces each. So you're getting nine ounces of chicken and Quite honestly, for $2.50, you could catch a 12 ounce can of this on sale at the grocery store. So Dollar Tree ain't always necessarily your cheapest option, but sometimes it might be the only option you have. I'm also gonna use a can of cream of mushroom soup. I normally put cream of chicken in my chicken pot pies, but there wasn't a can of cream of chicken in that store. And I use them interchangeably in casseroles. Got a 15 ounce can of mixed vegetables, drained as well. I did not pick up salt and pepper at the Dollar Tree. I figured everybody has that on hand, but you can get it there if you don't. I season it up really well, and we're just gonna mix all this together. Now for our topping, we're gonna use a cup of the biscuit mix. I'm gonna use a half a cup of milk and the Dollar Tree does have this shelf stable milk. You just wanna refrigerate it once you open it. And I'm gonna put in a big heaping spoonful of mayonnaise. I knew that I would forget some items. Sure enough, I had to go back and get the flour tortillas and either a taco or enchilada sauce. 
and I thought I would check again for eggs. I know they had eggs, but they do not have them now. So this mayonnaise, I'm gonna use it for a substitute for these eggs. And they do sell mayonnaise at the Dollar Tree. So I will add in that to my total as well. I'm gonna add just a little bit more milk to mine. I do want it a little bit more of a runny consistency. There's a lot of things that you can substitute for eggs, but a lot of it I don't have, like flaxseed and different stuff like that. I've also heard that you can use about a teaspoon of baking soda with a tablespoon of vinegar, and that would equal an egg. But I'm just going to use mayonnaise. Without an egg, sometimes it helps, you know, with rising in baked goods. But mainly in like baking a cake, you know how it will call for water and oil. The egg kind of helps bind those two things together because they don't really want to stick together. But in the case of this biscuit topping that I'm making, the egg really just serves as sort of you know, like some flavor and some richness as well as helping it rise and, and kind of stick together. So I think we're fine just like we are. I'm going to put this in a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes and we'll keep a close eye on it. Yummy! Look at this, how beautiful. And my oven cooks a little hot. I just did this about 20 or 22 minutes. Look how beautiful. I'm going to let that set while we do our macaroni. Macaroni and cheese, we all know how it's done. I'm putting in about three or four tablespoons of butter. And like I said, I took an account and I have it in the total, even though I forgot to grab margarine, using a fourth a cup of that milk from the Dollar Tree. I think the Dollar Tree had some of those individual servings of mac and cheese, but this is a much more cost-effective option if you're at home and you can make it, you have access to it. This chicken pot pie was so, so good. The topping was wonderful, worked out fine the way that I made it, and the Pillsbury biscuit mix was every bit as good as Bisquick, really delicious. And substituting the cream and mushroom soup, it tasted wonderful, maybe even a little bit heartier than when I make it with cream of chicken. I use those interchangeably all the time. This is something that was very good. This might have been our favorite meal of the week, and we haven't had a chicken pot pie in a while. The canned veggies, Green Giant, you can't go wrong with that. Four servings, $2 each. This was a meal I was proud to serve my family. Very good and super hearty and delicious. Well, we survived the third night at Bible school, so we're gonna celebrate with some chili cheese fries. This is just a little 14 ounce bag of fries. Gonna cook those up. I'm gonna use this canned chili and this nacho cheese canned sauce. And this is really just a snack, not very good for you, but <laughs> we're gonna do it anyway. And I wanted to show you another option that you could maybe make a meal out of this using the chili and the cheese. And these are the little flour tortillas. I got these for another recipe, but I would have plenty of these left. If I had a bag of Fritos from the Dollar Tree, you can make those yummy little um, Frito chili cheese wraps that Sonic has. So, gonna get this going. I got a sink full of dishes that I left before I went to church, so let's make a snack. can't wait to try this all beef chili with beans that I found at the Dollar Tree. It looks really good. It smells really good. I'm just going to go ahead and heat it thoroughly before we put it on the fries. Got my chili nice and warm so I don't have to worry about it getting heated all the way through. Going over the top of these fries. Going to drizzle some of this cheese sauce right over the top. I haven't heated it yet, but it won't take it long to heat up. This is what I'm using, and I have a good amount of that left for our rice bowls. Just gonna put this in, let that cheese get heated. I totally retract my earlier statement. This is definitely a meal. <laughs> this is a meal. This could be four portions. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> This was a really tasty treat. The chili was spot on, very delicious. I would thought the Pace cheese sauce, being a name brand, 
would have been maybe better than it was. It tasted good, but it had an odd little consistency of jiggly jello. Just wanted to be honest with you. We're going to have pinto beans for our next meal. And you can see it's actually 1 a.m. I'm going to put these in the crock pot and I'm going to let them cook all night. I did take my dried beans earlier today and I just looked them real good. You always want to wash your dried beans really good. Just get them nice and clean. And when I put them in this bowl of water, it was like beans just right here. This was one pound. So you can see like they are right at the top of the water now. So the water just helps them like they soak it in and they get softer and they kind of swell up. Helps them cook quicker and I just, I really like to soak my beans a day before I cook them. I just think it helps. We're going to drain this water off and get them in our crock pot. When cooking beans, you just want to make sure you really have them covered with water because they will really soak it up. And the last thing that you want to happen is for your beans to get all dried out. In a perfect world, we have us a big bunch of ham to put in here. And you actually can get a canned ham at the Dollar Tree. And I put a canned ham in pinto beans before and it worked out fine. But I'm going to throw the salt and a little bit of pepper to them. Beans do need a good amount of seasoning. You can buy oil at the Dollar Tree. But you know what's free? Bacon grease. Bacon grease is free. I'm not putting any <laughs> price on this. I had it in my refrigerator. I think most people save stuff like that. So I'm just going to put a big old glob of bacon grease down in there and stir them around. Put that lid on and I'm just going to cut mine over onto high. I'm going to let them cook all night long. Probably let them cook all day tomorrow on high. We'll probably eat them about two or three o'clock. I'll let these beans cook about eight hours on high and they are very soft and very done. But these beans are really light colored. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon now. I cut them over onto low while I went and did my morning errands. This is a little trick my mama taught me to make your bean soup a little bit thicker. Just smush them up right along the side and stir them back in. I'm also just gonna give them a little taste. They taste really good. I'm gonna put the lid back on, turn them up on high, and let them get to cooking up hard while we fix the rest of the meal, which is going to be this box of all gratin potatoes, a can of collard greens, and I'm gonna make this honey sweet cornbread mix. One thing I do wanna point out in this video too is always check your boxes. I find some of the best recipes on the side of packaging. It says to use your favorite leftover veggies. A little bit of water, milk, butter, put some ground thyme in there and some additional cheese. Look there, you're gonna have a veggie potato casserole. At the Dollar Tree, you might get some dairy products, but as far as fresh vegetables, they're not able to carry that, but they do have canned vegetables, canned fruits, and they got a really good selection of frozen veggies. We're gonna go ahead and make this whole 16 ounce package of cornbread muffins. We'll eat them later. And this is another one that look here, it has a great recipe on the back for a tamale pie. And you can probably get all of this stuff at the Dollar Tree. It might be a little bit more expensive, but um, you know, you could buy all that stuff there. You know, we were talking about the egg situation. This one calls for three eggs, so I'm just going to use a big old bunch of mayonnaise in there. If you've been here a while, you know how I feel about pinto beans and cornbread. It's one of my favorites. But you're going to see here that sometimes there's no substitute for an egg. My cornmeal muffins did not really hold together that well, but that's okay because they were just going under beans and it worked fine. These beans were really, really good. They were a light color, but they tasted delicious. I could have put that over on the stovetop and cooked it really hard and made my bean soup a little bit thicker, but you know what? 
This was delicious. Can't beat this. After four servings, probably had a little bit of beans and plenty of cornbread left, but this was a delicious meal, and I do like a big dollop of mayonnaise mixed in my pinto beans. Today, we're gonna use some leftovers and make a crock pot ravioli. First, let's talk about this. This is real raw crock pot talk today. That white film, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly safe to cook in it. This is just a white film that comes just from using your crock pot. No matter how hard you scrub, it's gonna come back when it dries. And beans are the worst to leave this white film when you cook beans in your crock pot. This is just telling me it's time to clean it really good. What I like to do is put, oh, maybe half a cup of baking soda in here and let it cook on low with the baking soda and water for about an hour or two, then scrub it out really, really good. And it takes a lot of that white off. First, I am going to spray it with some nonstick spray. I'm sure this is also a culprit in that white film. <laughs> and this is some of that pasta sauce that we had left over from when we made those pizzas the other day with the Texas toast. Then I've got a 13 ounce bag of cheese ravioli. I'm gonna lay some of this in here. I realize this is not a very pretty <laughs> display of this stuff, but this is how I kept it in my refrigerator. This is the sausage the other half of that little roll of sausage that we used for our pizzas. We got plenty of sauce, so let's just use a little bit more of that. Then we'll put in the rest of our ravioli, cover that with a little bit of this sauce. Then last but not least, I'm gonna use about half of this bag of cheese that I had left over. It's probably a little bit more than half of this left. I'm gonna put that on the very top, and I didn't worry about layering any in between because those raviolis have cheese in them. And I am just gonna cook mine on low for about two, three hours. It's noon already. We're gonna have an early dinner, and this was frozen, if I didn't mention that. I did not thaw that ravioli. Frozen ravioli and frozen tortellini are wonderful to use in the crock pot. But these pastas are not the kind of meal that you're going to set at 7 o'clock in the morning before you go to work and it's going to be good when you come home. They can't go all day. They can just go about four hours tops. It's been about four hours. This looks absolutely delicious. Got me some bread in the oven and let's plate her up. Does anybody else ever put stuff up, even food, and then you can't find it? Or is it just me? Well, that's what happened to me tonight. You know, I saved those three pieces of Texas toast. I can't find them. I specifically remember breaking the cardboard box down, rolling the little bag of them up, putting a clip on it, and sticking it in the freezer. I know I did it. I can't find them anywhere. I don't know what's happened. Maybe I accidentally just got my mind on something else and threw the cheese toast away with the box. I don't know. But I know one thing, I'm not to be denied some bread tonight. <laughs> it's not happening. So I'm just gonna butter up some regular bread, season it up, making me some toast. Friends, this is another one that was so, so delicious. I worried about using that weird blend of cheese in some of these dishes, but that shredded Mexican blend cheese was really good. It tastes good with everything we ate it with. I am showing that this meal is only gonna feed three people because the bag of ravioli is about half the size of what you would normally get. This was a huge servings though, and this was so good. I was really impressed with their ravioli. And an update, I still haven't found that Texas cheese toast. <laughs> just in case you were wondering. I melted just, oh, maybe a teaspoon of that butter in the skillet. I got two of these four and a half ounce cans of chunk white chicken. I've drained it well. I'm just gonna chunk up any big pieces. And I thought I would just try to brown this up a little bit or just kind of get it heated through. Maybe get it a little toasty color and flavor to it. 
before we add some frozen veggies in here. And I'm just gonna season this and treat it just like I would if I was, you know, cooking chicken from fresh. Put a little bit of pepper and some salt in it. Now that my chicken's sizzling up a little bit, I got this Santa Fe blend of frozen veggies. Corn, black beans, red and green peppers, and onions. 12 ounces of this for $1.25. And it has a really nice resealable um, Ziploc deal. Two of the items that I forgot to pick up that I had to go back for was some enchilada sauce and the flour tortillas, both of them for this meal. I just thought this would be a really nice way to give this some added flavor since I'm not really, you know, using any seasonings besides salt and pepper. This is smelling really good. I don't want it to get like runny or totally red, but I do want it to have plenty of flavor. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Basically, I'm just gonna let this sit here and simmer out some of the sauce and some of the water from the frozen veggies. Let everything get nice and cooked down. I also grabbed this bag of microwavable Spanish rice. I'm gonna cook this up and you can either put it in your wrap or eat it on the side. And remember that nacho cheese sauce we had left over from our chili cheese fries? I just covered it and put it in the fridge and we'll use a little bit of that to top our wraps tonight. I had really high hopes for this meal. I'll explain that in just a minute, but I don't like rice. Patrick likes rice, and I thought he could eat his like a rice bowl, but he said this rice was absolutely awful. He said, tell your friends, do not buy it. <laughs> so there you go, is a warning with the rice. And then here's kind of what happened with the chicken mixture. Okie dokie, the Santa Fe veggie blend frozen from the Dollar Tree. When I was cooking it, I noticed some bright green things and I thought, well, maybe just some other vegetable got in there. No, when we started eating it, I said it tastes different. Something in here doesn't taste right and the black beans were like harder. So I came back over here and like mushed one and they're green on the inside. So I had to Google on this. These are black soybeans. These are not black beans like what you get in a can in your Hispanic food aisle, like what I'm used to eating. They're black soybeans. They were a fad, it said, back in the 70s, I think. Um, Mom and Mel don't like green soybeans <laughs> parading around as black beans in my enchilada chicken wrap. So that's a big no on this. Tonight we're gonna do a penne pasta bake and I'm gonna make a tomato beef sauce using these. It's two patties from the Dollar Tree. Important to note, these are not pre-cooked. They are, they have to be cooked all the way through. I got my oven preheated to about 350 degrees and you know, this is cooking up pretty good. Browning up nicely. Just wanna make sure we get it cooked thoroughly. Now that my meat is cooked through, and if I didn't say, this was half a pound. Each one of those patties was a quarter of a pound. I'm gonna take this can of Hunt's pasta sauce. This is the garlic and herb variety. And I'm just gonna stir that right into my meat. Thought it would just be a good idea to let it cook in with this meat just a little bit. I'm also gonna sprinkle in just a little bit of that Italian seasoning. I'm just gonna put the lid on this and I'm gonna cut it down and I'm just gonna let it simmer maybe five or 10 minutes. I'm gonna cook my pasta up and remember this is a 20 ounce box. Be on the lookout for these at your Dollar Tree. And I used a little less than half of this. Now I've drained my pasta and I am just gonna pour my sauce right in. Mix all that together. I've got a baking dish here. I'm gonna spray it really good. I'm just gonna turn my pasta and sauce right out into this. Now you could just eat it just like it was. You don't have to bake it up, but I always think it just tastes a little bit better when you throw it in a casserole dish and cover it with some cheese, bake it up and let it get ooey gooey. I'm just gonna use all of this bag. This is a six ounce bag. 
sprinkle a little more Italian on the top just to make it pretty. Give it a little color and a little flavor. We're definitely going to cover this with aluminum foil. We don't want that cheese to burn. Put this in a 350 degree oven for about 25 or 30 minutes covered. Then I took the foil off and let it go under the broiler till it was nice and brown. I was so impressed with these burger patties. This was a wonderful meat sauce. They cooked up beautifully. Kind of like with the sausage, I don't know that I could just eat it like a hamburger. It's probably all in my head, but it was very tasty. It made a great meat sauce. I wanted to do something with some Alfredo and not just use all red sauces, but there was just none to be found in my Dollar Tree. And I only went to my one local store and I only went one day because that was all the time that I had. So it was what it was and it was fine. I would have loved to have had a big salad with this. You can't do that at the Dollar Tree, but I did find this bag of California blend frozen veggies. They looked a little suspect to me when I poured them out of the bag, but I went ahead and steamed them up and I just didn't eat these. I understand that cauliflower turns very easily, but this was a little much, and I know this could, you know, happen anywhere probably, but we didn't eat these. I just tossed them. I was putting the final touches on this video before I went to bed, and it dawned on me. I hadn't given you the final breakdown, so here's what we have, friends. 26 servings spread across seven different meals, came to $34.89. That was, of course, before taxes, and that was based on the per serving price. What I actually spent with taxes was about $42 to $45, and I have a little bit of product left over, so, you know, you have to buy the whole thing, but that's what it costs per serving. Even if I rounded high at $45, 26 servings, that's pretty good. I was pleasantly surprised with the Dollar Tree items. I had a few things that let me down, but you know, that can happen anywhere. My goal here is not to bash the Dollar Tree. I love the Dollar Tree, but the goal was to show what you could do with the budget if you only had Dollar Tree items. But the overarching theme that I wanted to touch on in this video is if you are struggling to feed your family or you know someone that is, please don't be embarrassed by that. Food insecurity is nothing to be embarrassed about. These are hard times and all of us are struggling right now. Please reach out to resources in your community. Contact a church that you see on your way every day. Most churches have a food pantry now. If you can't find a church that has a food pantry, call your local county or city government agencies and they will put you in touch with resources that will help you. That is nothing to be embarrassed of and there is help available. Thank you guys so much for being here this week. I appreciate you spending your time with me. I know this has been a little bit of a different one, but I have sure enjoyed it. And I wanna thank Mandy for collabing with me. Don't forget to go over and check out her video when you're done here. Friends, I will see you next week. Until then, I send you love from my kitchen.